basically, anybody that wants to speak, we're going to try to limit to two to three minutes. Uh, support or against. Uh, then we'll go into closed session. It was asked for that. And decide on disciplinary action and uh, or whatever. And we'll come back out and let everybody know what the decision is and make that motion at that time. Um, uh, so I guess we're down to any comments. And we'll basically just have Randy run around with the mic. Uh, trying to be as safe as we can with this. Who wants to speak? Uh, we seem to be gathered here at this specially called Super Rapid City Council meeting because of social media around muck and uh, local media trying to blow a molehill into a mountain. There are ill-qualified and dishonest people in all professions that need to be dealt with accordingly. Doctors, ministers, mechanics, lawyers, law enforcement, politicians, media, and on and on. Tim Porter has done a stellar job serving his duties in this community. Nearly all humans that I can think of, starting with myself, have made comments we have come to regret. And Tim has made one, apologized, and I for one have accepted his apology. His love for this community, for the community, or the people in this community, have shown with a glow. If there are problems in law enforcement personnel, they are far from here. The Lord's the only one that knows what this community has avoided for crime and more because of the presence of care that Tim has given to this job in this, in this Valley of Beauty. I would ask the City Council vote unanimously to keep this fine man working in our community. Thank you, Mayor and City Council, for having such a meeting so that we can voice our concerns and, our, um, and let the, our voices be heard. I am not here today to express an opinion in regards to what this council should do. I think you guys will have the information that is needed to make a, uh, a verdict in regards to what needs to be taking place from here on out. What I am here tonight is to, dis um, to voice my own opinion and concerns as a resident of this town. I've been watching the news, I've been watching social media in regards to uh, Chief Porter's post, and I, I agree in the fact that I think he has the right to his opinion. My concern with that is he is also a civil servant to everybody in this community. And words do matter. And he is a great influence in this community on the attitudes as well as the behaviors of this community. He has to be, as a civil servant, a friend, a confidant, and a protector of all people that live in this community. People's perception is key. I see the post that was posted and I'm concerned whether or not he is a, a policeman for all of us in this community. Sioux Rapids is a predominantly white community and being a minority in this community has to be difficult. But if you feel like the chief of police does not support you, that would make it almost impossible to live in this community. Being a father of five children, two of which are African American, I have come to understand what African American people deal with each day and I understand what white privilege is. I'm going to give you a couple examples real quickly. Anybody here in this area, almost everybody, can walk through a community in any one of our neighborhoods and nobody would look at it twice. I have a son that's six foot four black and he is watched at all times. If we go into stores, somebody's usually watching him. I'll give you one more example. My daughter, Tayana, who is 17 and African American, was recently in the line at a McDonald's with my wife and my youngest child. There was an SUV in front of them. When the SUV got their food, they stopped got out and started screaming racial comments towards our family for no other reason than the fact that Tayana was driving. That is perception. Perception that words don't matter, that behaviors are okay, and that there's no, no discipline for any kind of those behaviors. My fear is this. When you have leaders in the community that make off-handed comments, and I agree with Hondo when he says, we have all made those. But when you're a political, when you're a figure in the community, 
you have to be even more mindful of the things that you say in a community. Because what you say matters to the people around you that support you, that care for you. They're going to take those perceptions and they're going to put those into their life. We as a community need to practice better resistance or better control of what we say on social media and what we say to our neighbors even. We can make this town a better place, all of us working together to have more tolerance and more understanding of the people that are around us. Thank you. You are entitled to your First Amendment rights to speak your mind however you want. Just because you're a chief of police and you have a so-called political office, you are still entitled to your opinion. You are going to make mistakes. But that is okay. That is okay. As far as you can be. What we should have to be is free will. It's view and think however we want. That's what God gave us. Under no circumstance should we be holding him accountable for making a mistake that where he is entitled to his opinion. Now, he may have made a mistake in saying by what he said, but he may have viewed something differently, and we just don't know it. So how can we judge him for what he said and we may not even know it? We can, we can be taking this completely the wrong way. I don't think there was anything racial in what he said. I see in the comments. And there was nothing racial about it at all. I don't think any disciplinary action should be taken at all. I really don't feel that. I don't. You guys are entitled to your opinion. I'm entitled to mine. Chief Porter's entitled to his. When do we start punishing people because they have their own view? That is not what we're made of. It's not who we're supposed to be. If people are hurt, by what other people say, get some tougher skin. That's all I got to say about that. My name is Billy. I'm a here in Sioux Rapids. I've been here about 17 years. Uh, my wife, Suzanne, works at the Casey's. I'm pretty sure everybody around here knows my wife, and my mother in law, and everybody, and my sister in law. Um, I am a Marine Corps vet. And I know that day one, when I signed that check to protect my country from freedoms and discipline from anyone who stepped forth on this country and made a difference and it wasn't pure or factual or indecent and just didn't want to be in this country, I made that sign, I signed that check to be a person of great need. And I feel, honestly, being here 17 years, I've never had a problem with the law. I mean, my son's done some stupid stuff, but Tim is an excellent man at what he does. I just feel that as a nation and as a whole, we need to grow together and step up to the plate and be one not different. Doesn't mean race, gender, equality, or nothing like that. Just be people and be nice. That's all I gotta say. I'm sorry, there's not too many people out there that know me. I've been here six years, and the first person to welcome me into, into this town was Tim. He helped me even move my stuff in. He's been great. I'm, uh, I'm married to, to a Mexican-American. I've had people of all races move uh, through my home. He's been nothing but willing to uh, help, help and help through the process with everyone he's been in. To go forth and judge him on a comment on social media, I think is completely absurd. And then the other portion is to actually go through it and omit certain parts of that video that, that have happened in the context of that situation where the people in that vehicle were at, at, at risk to their family. I think that's also equally as, as absurd. If anybody who's, who's in that position should be able to realize, use a little, a little bit of logic and say, probably would have drove through as well just to protect their wife, uh, wife, family, 
or any well more than himself personally. I don't think there was any racial motivation behind this comment, and I don't see any reason why this disciplinary committee is even in, in effect. So, Tim, you have my family support. I think the news portrayed Tim as the person he really isn't. I have a little girl at home that will legit sit at the end of my driveway and wait for him to drive by when he's on duty. She has even gone upon to look at him as a hero that she thought she had to have a city sticker on her power wheels to drive up and down the streets because we all have to have stickers for our ATVs and everything else. So she thought she couldn't drive her battery operated car up and down the streets. So guess who showed up at our house with a sticker? Tim. So she's legal on the streets. <laughs> the last three years now, she has done nothing but dressed up like a cop because that is what she wants to be. And the only cop she's known in her entire life is Tim. Every year, he takes the time to make sure we find each other for her and him to take a picture together. Now that's the image we know of Tim, not what the media is telling us of what he looks like. Don't know me. I'm Joel McCoy. I teach and coach here. I've been here the last two years. Um, just really quick. Like I said, I've been here two years. I'd like to be here for many, many, many more. Um, I would also like to say that this is the greatest country on the face of the earth. And for some reason, certain people in this country are trying to divide us. And I have been. I have been. I was on a college wrestling team. Every phrase that this you want to say. I wasn't white, they weren't black, they weren't Hispanic. We were all brothers. And when my sister goes on, she's a valedictorian, that's the only percent of going to play softball. It'll be the same thing, they'll all be your sisters. It's time to wake up. The media is trying to divide us. Tim, you're a great guy. I have the most respect for you. I just... My whole point is, I can't believe what everybody tells you. Do we need to get better? Absolutely. But guess what? Like I said, greatest country on the planet. We will get better. I promise. I've been my whole life. Damn near 70 years old. I live between here and Rio Grande. And I, I notice there's a lot of press here. And they don't know Tim Porter from a bale of hay. Personally, <laughs> I want to tell them, uh, like the media that you're here so eager to get a story on, um, my life here in this small town is when I want to go to the grocery store, I leave my keys in the car and I let it run. If I go to the bar down at the bowling alley and Sherry Knudsen uh, gets busy and has to go cook, we the patrons take the money and put it in the till. So... <laughs> I don't think we can stand in front of your community, so don't judge us. And I, I want to say, Honorable Mayor and Council, your job is to appease the citizens of Sioux Rapids and not appease Channel 4, Storm Lake Times, or anybody else. Here, uh, I'd like to show a hand to everybody in the audience who supports them, so you can take that in. Order. My recommendation is two weeks suspension without pay, and Tim and the council take a sensitivity course. Um, uh, do we get a motion by anybody on that? Motion by Mike, second. Second by Linda. All in favor? Oh. Motion carried. The only next thing we got is our next council meeting will be July 8th. Thanks everybody for coming. We appreciate the input.
like to thank everybody for coming. I'll be out there in a minute to uh, try and greet most of you. I know most of you have been here for over, over 10 years now, and I appreciate the support. And these guys here are very fair. We discussed it at the end. And I think it's a very appropriate decision. And I believe in what they do. And basically, thanks. I think you've done a wonderful job for our town and our country. And I'd like to remind everyone how many have heard the words, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. This is what Jesus would like us to do. And what a good time for us to start practicing the words of Christ. Dear God, our Heavenly Father, we come to you at this time knowing what a mess this world is in, dear Lord. We ask for unity again. We ask for your healing upon this land, this town, this state, and this country. We are seeking your face and asking for your divine guidance in our lives. We believe Officer Porter to be a good man. Please give peace to him, his family, and his community. I pray for a special blessing upon this town, and this land, and this country. And we pray these things in Jesus' holy name. Amen.